Be inspired on Liberty Radio. Life can be tough sometimes and throw challenges in our way that can leave us wounded and scarred. My name is Marsha Varciana and we are on the streets of London with the leaflet for this Sunday's event, From a Wound to a Scar. And on the back, there are several options. We will find out which ones the public can relate to and how they have dealt with or are currently dealing with the wounds in their soul. Do you believe internal wounds can be healed? Um, I think it depends if you're ready to heal them. I think it's um, a very difficult journey. And if you've traveled and you've had trauma, it's not so easy just to turn things around. And it can have detrimental effects if it's not looked at. Yeah, I do believe internal wounds can be healed. I think therapy, I think talking to people. It depends, on, obviously it depends on what's happened, but a lot of time internal wounds can be healed. Sometimes you just got to forgive and forget and let it all just happen. Have you ever been wounded? Oh yes, <laughs> I have been wounded. I've been wounded by friends, I've been wounded by family, I've been wounded by my job. I've been, yeah, you, I think it, everyone gets wounded by someone or something. Yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a few times. It's been over now. It's, it's been a long time where I just live and forget. Emotionally, yes, very much so. Um, re just recently, um, I nearly passed away. I nearly died because of COVID. Um, I feel blessed that I'm still here, but it leaves you with the trauma of survival because so many people died. Which of the following do you relate to? Oh, yeah, rejection. Oh, humiliation, yeah, when you get something wrong, you do a performance and it goes wrong. Betrayal, yeah. Disappointment, yeah. Yeah, a few. <laughs> I do relate to a few of those. I've had verbal abuse. I get that most of the time working here. I've had family losses. I've had betrayal. I've had humi humiliation. Quite a few on them. Mm, I could tick a few of those. Um, I think injustice is the one that jumps out the most to me. Rejection, abandonment, betrayal, humiliation, verbal abuse, physical abuse, quite a lot of them. <laughs> How has this situation had an impact on your life? Um, finding people, like, finding relationships hard because I don't, I don't trust people. Family losses, my granddad died like four, yeah, he's, he's, um, it was like, Nine days before my 16th birthday, and the funeral was on my birthday, so I hate my birthday. Well, it's affected my view of a lot of things, my interaction with people, my ability to trust people, um, and my outlook on life. Yeah, it's affected a lot, a lot of things. <laughs> For example, rejection or betrayal, it can make you like isolate yourself and just be, become like insulated and think that people are against you and you don't want to trust them anymore. How would you take care of an internal wound in your soul? I would pray um, because I'm a Christian, so I pray to God about that. Um, just really read the Bible, look at God's promises, look at the word in the Bible. Um, most of the time that has actually helped me for any internal wounds that I have. I acknowledge what's gone on. So whether it's like a, a breakup or rejection or something that inside you, you're feeling pain from, you need to acknowledge that it's there and you need to speak to someone, whether it's someone you know or someone external that you don't know, and just to process like what has happened, how it's made you feel. Um, talk to people normally, because I, I don't, I, there's no point keeping it in because you keep it in, it just makes you go, it just makes you go crazy. I learned that the hard way being younger. I think um, music is something that I turn to when I'm hurting or even when I feel joy. So I think if you've had an internal problem, it can release some of that tension. It doesn't take it away, but it makes you feel better for that time or that moment. Um, and I believe that helps for me anyway. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Be Inspired on Friday. I wasn't able to be here with you the past few days, but we're back and it's a pleasure to be here with you. 
And in a few moments, we're going to pick up on some of the things that the people on that video said, because especially that lady who spoke there last said something very, very important. Very important in how perhaps the majority of people in the world deal with their wounds, which unfortunately is ineffective. In fact, by the very own admission of that person. We're going to get back to that in a second. But actually, uh, on Tuesday night, we had two groups, large groups of people here from Finsbury Park, who left our shores to go to the Temple of Solomon. And there, at the Temple of Solomon, they are now doing a very, very spiritual pilgrimage. And we're going to look at some pictures right now. If we can put the pictures on the screen, that's, that's right. Uh, that's when they were leaving here, the, the UK, at the airport. And I asked people to, to give me feedback today on a chat that we created, how that, mess, th that uh, pilgrimage is going. And the, the, the feedback we've been getting has been absolutely amazing. In fact, you can see there are some images of uh, people learning the importance of the altar, why the altar was created by God, uh, the importance of, of sacrifices, of offerings, of animals at that time in the Old Testament. And still today, let's stop on that picture. You can see there, can you put that picture full screen? You see there Miss Christiani with the ladies. They had the, um, the Bible meditation that happens there in Brazil for the pastor's wives. And today, <laughs> our members were able to take part what a blessing. You can see how happy they are. <laughs> and Miss Christiani, they're very happy as well. And on Sunday, they'll be taking part of the service there in the Temple of Solomon in the morning with Bishop Renato. And they'll be traveling back on Sunday night. And I hope, by the way, this is Bishop Eduardo who received all of them. You see there, Pastor Renan, Pastor Michael Oni, the wives, and all the people there together. And hopefully you'll get an opportunity to make this pilgrimage very, very soon. All right? We're going to watch now the testimony of Audrey. And when we come back, we are going to go into the word, the bread, uh, the daily bread, the word for today. Prepare yourself. Let's watch this testimony of someone who was healed of the inner wounds. And we'll come back in just a few moments. Before coming to church, I was pretty much really sad. I faced a lot of family problems. I was extremely insecure. I just didn't really like myself, really. My lowest moment is when I was sexually abused at the age of 11. This caused a lot of insecurities. I didn't believe in love. I had this sort of hatred towards men. I didn't love myself. I compared myself a lot to my peers. I constantly had to wear makeup in order for me to feel beautiful and to validate myself. I just craved that attention from, you know, people around me. I've tried different solutions before coming to church, that being, you know, smoking, drugs, constantly drinking with my friends, going night out. I also always had to be around a, a group of friends. That way I didn't have to think about what had happened. I would sort of zone out and worry about different, different things. It took me around a year um, before I took things seriously in the church and practicing what I was being taught and that's when I started seeing changes a year in. The main thing that I understood was what I was going through had a solution. I didn't have to go through what I was going through any longer. And it just came down to my faith and put into practice what I've been taught. And ultimately I'll see a change. My wound became a scar when I didn't have to depend on others for validation. So I didn't have to compare myself to others on social media. I didn't depend on, on drugs to find the sense of like peace or false peace, should I say. And I forgave those that hurt me. So I 
didn't have a grudge towards them any longer. I could, you know, look them in the eyes and just, you know, see them as who they are. As a healed person with scars, I am completely different today. I am at peace. I am happy, like, within myself. I don't need to, you know, pack on a lot of makeup in order for me to feel you know, pretty and validated by people. I am married today. Before, I never really thought I would get married because of what had happened. I have a fantastic relationship with my family. My sisters and I are just best of friends. Um, my mom is someone that I can, you know, call on for help. She's another best friend of mine, someone I can call a best friend. I've always wanted a uh, mother and daughter relationship where you could laugh together, do things together. And that's exactly what I have now with her. After such a long journey, I have made it out of the other side. I received the Holy Spirit and I have, my life is totally transformed. And my wounds have now become scars. You see that a wound has become a, a scar. One of the signs is through what this young lady said, how she before used to kind of like hate men because of, of things that had, had happened to her before, but today she's happily married. So she truly overcame that wound because her life proves that. Another point is that she's able to talk about it without breaking down. This is one of the things we have said over the past week, is that one of the signs a person has overcome a trauma is that they are able to talk about what happened without breaking down, without allowing that to spoil their day or the rest of the next few days. And now is the time I want to go back to one of the last few comments that were made in the video, the interviews we did at the beginning. Because that lady who spoke at the end said like this, she was asked, how do you deal with your wounds? And she said, well, I, I listen to music a lot. Music for me is therapeutical. And it helps at least in that moment. That's what she said. Music helps at least in that moment. And she's right, listen, anything that pulls at your heartstrings, emotions, that helps momentarily. But it's no better than a drug. It's no better than something that makes you forget about a problem but doesn't really cure the problem. And many people all over the world who don't know about the power of God, they want to deal with the wounds that they have but they don't know how to. So they turn to things that make them feel better. And I'm not putting music in the same category as drugs or alcohol. But why do people turn to alcohol? Why do people turn to drugs, illicit drugs? Why? Because at least momentarily, it makes them feel better. Why do people go partying excessively? Because at least momentarily, it makes them feel better. But the next day, when the hangover is, is finished, or when the person returns back from the party, the problem is there, and dare I say, they feel even worse. So we're not talking about something that's gonna make you feel better on Sunday, the day of from wound to scar. We're not talking about something which will make you feel better for a day. We're talking about something that can cure your problem, like in the testimony you saw. And look what the Word of God says. God's Word says, in Psalm 30, O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. This is what we want to see God doing in your life, to bring your soul up from the grave. You know, of course, we pray also for physical healing, for physical recovery. 
But we're not talking about this. And I believe that in many cases, the, the pain that people feel in the soul is much worse than the one they feel in the body. I have Pastor Michael Ose here with me tonight. Uh, Pastor Michael, good evening. And, good evening. you know, we, we do uh, often the work of the night angels, of going to the bridges to put the messages there for people who are thinking of taking their lives. And it's very common that police officers stop us and they ask us what they're doing, and they then applaud what, they, what they're doing. And we've been told on more than one occasion by police officers that they've had to take someone out from the river more than once. People who jumped into the river from a bridge to die once, they were unsuccessful because someone came in and, and pulled them to safety, and they went there and did that again. But people don't think of ending their lives usually, not that it doesn't happen, but usually people who go and do that, they don't do it because of a physical pain. Because for the physical pain, there, there are prescription drugs that you can take to make you feel better. But usually people do that because of a disappointment in relationships, because of an abuse, because they feel like a failure, whatever reason. And that's why we say, Pastor Michael, that the, the, the pain of the soul is worse than the pain of the body. Because the pain of the body, listen, there is always something you can take to make you feel better. Always. No matter how much the pain is, there will be some kind of prescription drug that can make you feel almost painless, at least temporarily. But what do you do with the pain of the soul if there is nothing to fix it? And that's where many people, Pastor Michael, they make decisions that are sometimes catastrophic, catastrophic for them and their families. But the only cure is what God says here, that He's willing to bring that person up from the grave. Yes, Bishop, and that's where we get our faith and our confidence from. That indeed we're going to be able to bring to people the solution. There are people, as you've mentioned, they've, they've chosen to resolve their internal issues in many different ways. But the conclusion is that the problem is still there. When we read from the Bible, we get a definite answer. I will heal. Not treat, but I will heal. And that's the faith that we have, that this Sunday, with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God, we are going to not treat, but heal mm -hmm. the soul, because the faith comes from the Word of God. We, we have a comment here from Katie. I think she's from Aberdeen, Scotland. She wrote here, and she says, I'm one of the people that wants to take their own life. Katie, you are the person for which we came here tonight to do this service. You are the person we want to reach. I know that, you know, at this moment you may think that the solution is to take your life and you may not see a light at the end of the tunnel, but God is able to cure your soul forever, no matter what you have been through. I know that uh, Aberdeen is a little bit of a distance from our nearest church, which is in Glasgow. If I'm not mistaken, there is a special work, a weekly service that happens in Aberdeen. But we're going to put the, the WhatsApp number on our screen. Katie, you can send us a, a message to our WhatsApp number, 020-7686-6010. Keep that number, write it down, keep it with you. Because at the end of the program, you can send a message there to the pastor, talk to him, and see what is the best way for you to attend the nearest event or from wound to scar in your local branch, which will be um, in Glasgow. Or Aberdeen, like I said, I believe there's a, a service that happens there once a week. Okay, you can, you can talk to the pastor later. But one thing we are sure, there is a cure for that wound that is inside of you. We are going to say a prayer in just a moment. And you can see here before me, we have a loaf of bread and we have a bottle of water. And every Sunday, we ask people to bring with them, and by the way, the loaf of bread that you bring, should bring with you on Sunday morning doesn't have to be like this. 
Okay, it can be any bread that you eat. We are going to claim on the biblical promise that's, that God says, I will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove infirmity from the midst of you. Perhaps the infirmity you want to have removed from you is the infirmity in your soul. Maybe not phys a physical infirmity, but in your soul. And you, you will see that by using your faith on the promises of God, God, who is the surgeon who has access to your soul, your body as well, but especially your soul, a physical surgeon may have access to your body, to your organs, but he doesn't have access to your soul, but God does, and that's where he will perform his healing. This Sunday, all should bring with them a loaf of bread that we are going to be blessing there in the service in a bottle of water, and we are going to teach you how you're going to heal that wound in your soul. We are going to unite our faith right now to pray for you, maybe you like Katie, you who are thinking of taking your life, you that maybe you don't want to take your life but you still carry inside of you this wound for years that you've never dealt with. Let's talk to God, let's unite our faith in prayer right now. Let's talk to God, it's time to pray. My Lord and my Father, you were sent to the brokenhearted. You said, in fact, in your word that you didn't come for those who were well, who were sane, because they didn't need a doctor. You came for those who are sick. But many, my Lord, like many of those who came to you, the woman that you found at the well with broken relationships, the woman caught in adultery, Zacchaeus, who, who was a thief. These were people who had wounds in their soul. You healed many of the wounds physically, wounds of leprosy, my Lord, all kinds of wounds, issues of blood. But you healed also those whose problems were spiritual, whose problems were emotional, whose problems were in the deepest part of the soul. And so I ask you, my Father, that you may do the same here this Sunday morning in Finsbury Park and in all of our churches, but that the healing of the soul can start tonight. And how? By making this person believe that there is nothing impossible for you, my Lord, that you are the one who has access to the mind, to the heart, to the soul of this person, to restore them. Like we read, my Father, take the soul of this person out of the grave, pull their soul out of the grave and heal them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen, we are going to leave on the screen for the next few moments. I don't know if we can. Can we play a song now at the end of the program and leave just the WhatsApp number on the screen? Can we do that? A song as a background. So we're going to do that. We're going to end the program right now. It's 25 past 10. We're going to play a song and instead of showing you beautiful images, we're going to leave the WhatsApp number and the helpline number on the screen for the duration of the song. You can take note of that uh, WhatsApp number, the helpline number as well. And if you are need to talk to someone right now, you can do that. If you, maybe you don't need to talk to someone right now, but there is someone that you know who needs help right now, send that person a message, send the, the, the WhatsApp number to them, the helpline number, and tell them if you need to talk to someone, do that now. Sometimes we only need to talk to someone. There is a saying, and Pastor Michael also will correct me if I'm wrong, there's a saying that goes, a problem shared is a problem halved. Yes, I think so. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, but it makes sense, it right? Makes sense, definitely. A problem shared is a problem halved. It's like you're carrying something very heavy. Someone comes, in to, comes along to help you. 
immediately the load is, is shared, is halved, right? It becomes a lot easier. And sometimes with problems, it's like this. Talk to somebody. Bishop, how much does it cost to call the helpline? It, no, it costs no more than any other landline you would call. And the WhatsApp is free. You, you can't call the WhatsApp number, but you can send a message and type and speak to someone. Okay? We'll see you this Sunday for the, the day of the healing of the wound, turning it, into a, uh, turning it into a scar, meaning that it was healed. And remember that tomorrow, if you are an evangelist, at 10 a.m. in the battalion group, you should bring with you your polo, your evangelism polo. I'll see you here tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning. All right? May God bless you. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow in the church or Sunday at your local UCKG. Bye-bye.